All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, you all are, I guess, logging into your computers and getting Excel open and whatnot, so I'll give you a moment to do that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get the sign-in sheets uh, passed around, and we'll go ahead and get started with some things. <coughs> All right, so um, last time, let me go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint to sort of uh, remind everybody where we're at. Um, last time, we went through the, I guess we'll call it the, the theoretical discussion behind this problem, right? And we looked at, uh, essentially at how we can apply a matrix methodology to solve uh, this problem. Well, um, you know, we did the, uh, the theoretical discussion, and what we're going to do today is the application. In other words, I, I want to take this problem, and I kind of want to redo it, but I want to redo it inside Microsoft Excel, okay? And um, I think you'll find this is a, uh, a fairly straightforward process. We might spend a little bit of time, you know, making sure that we're all right with this process. I mean, these Excel sheets can get uh, kind of big, and, and the, the big takeaway, I would say, is that if you're well organized, this will go very well. So I'll, we'll take our time and make sure that everything uh, goes smoothly. In the meantime, however, I do want to um, give you this, and there'll be a few of these to come, but this is uh, a document that I prepared, and I've got a, a few others that I'll give you all as the semester uh, progresses. But this is kind of a sort of a, a, a cookbook summary sheet, if you will, for how to do um, bar analysis. And a bar analysis is basically the problem that we did last time, just a bunch of bars uh, along one direction. Now, um, you know, this is a fairly simplistic procedure, but we'll take this procedure and we'll then expand it, uh, you know, say, okay, well, what if it was a truss? Well, if it was a beam uh, and what have you, and then you know go through it in, in uh, fairly significant detail. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna walk through this um, with you, and then we'll go into our example. So for uh, a bar analysis, the first step is, or for the first part of the problem, is to develop your stiffness matrix. So, so how does that work? Well, last time we discussed. Okay, the first thing you need to do is determine what's the individual stiffness matrix for each bar. You then need to assemble them into a global stiffness matrix. Then ultimately, you need to apply boundary conditions, right? Strike out the rows and columns associated with the supports, okay? And later on, we might talk about, well, what if the, the, you have something like a support settlement and the displacement isn't zero, but it's a specified value? That's another story for another day, <laughs> all right? So here's your, uh, your part one for the stiffness matrix. Now for the load vector. So the load vector is pretty simple for problems like this. You just write it down. You're going to have unknowns at the reactions, but we'll figure that out later. Now, the displacement vector is pretty straightforward, okay? You've got uh, a stiffness matrix that's been reduced according to boundary conditions. You've got a load vector that's been reduced according to boundary con conditions. So to get unknown displacements, we take the inverse of the stiffness matrix times the forces to get our displacements. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So now we've got our displacements, so what we then do is we say, well, we've got the displacements for the whole structure. We then break those apart into displacement vectors for each element. We get a displacement vector for each element. We have a stiffness matrix for each element that we got back in step one, so we can compute a force vector for each element and determine what are the forces inside uh, that individual element. And we've got a couple different options with free body diagrams. We'll take a look at both of those today. Um, I'd say arguably the easiest one is the second one where you just uh, go ahead and, and just do the full stiffness matrix times the full displacement vector and you'll get a full force vector for the whole system. And what you'll find is that in that full force vector the known values are the applied loads and the unknown values, the stuff you didn't know before, are your support reactions. So I think you'll see how this works and it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Everybody good so far? Okay. We'll take our time with this, but I want to go back and, 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 and re-examine this problem, make sure we're all clear on the grand scope of how this works. Okay, so we have a problem. Okay, this problem, how many joints do we have in the problem altogether? Or how many nodes do we have? Four nodes. So our total stiffness matrix for the whole system is going to be four by four, right? But for each individual element, it's just two by two, right? And how many elements do we have? Three. Okay. So 
we're going to have to do a similar procedure three different times and assemble it into a, a grand stiffness matrix. So let's go ahead and, and work on that. All right. So again, the big thing is making sure you're just neat with what you're doing. So I've got here an Excel sheet, and we'll use this Excel sheet to start working on our, our, uh, uh, our assembly and our, our analysis and whatnot. So get that screen about where I want it. Okay. So let's start filling in some values, okay? So let's see, what do we have? We'll start off with element one. And what do we have? Well, what defines element one? Okay, there are some numbers and some properties associated with element one. We have a cross-sectional area, right? Which is in uh, square inches. Can everybody read that? Okay. We have an E value, which is in KSI. We have an L value which is in inches, right? Okay. So why don't you all tell me, you tell me, what's, uh, what's the area for this element? What's the, what is it? I can't hear you. What's the area for element number one? Come on, I know. Six, there we go, six square inches, okay? What's the E value? What's that? You all know where I'm getting these values? Like, hold on, let me pull this back up. I'm talking about element number one. I'm talking about these values right here. Okay, so that's A. What's E? There we go. There we go. All right. You all see what I'm doing? Okay, all right. So E is going to be 2,000. And then what's L? 120. There we go. All right. So if you want, what I'm going to do is just so I'm clear on what my input is, I might format these cells like so. So just give them a little bit of color. I just went up here for the input uh, cells. So now I know that these are input values. Everybody okay with that? Maybe I'll do a little bit of formatting. Again, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with putting a little bit of love into your Excel sheet so that you know where things are coming from. Everybody okay with that? Now, in a stiffness matrix for bar elements, you know, we have area, we have E, and we have L. What do we end up having to do? What do we have to calculate? A, E, A, E, what's that? A, E divided by L is what I'm getting at. I'm saying we need this. We need A, E over L, right? So why don't I go ahead and just calculate that right now and say that it equals A times E divided by L. And remember it was 100, right? Is everybody okay with that? Now, the reason why I've set up my Excel sheet like this is because once I get everything all formatted really nicely and neatly, I'm going to take these cells and I'm going to copy and paste them, and then all I'm going to do is just change these numbers, right? Because these three numbers, A, E, and L, they're the only things that define the element. That's, that's the only thing we really need, right? An area, a modulus of elasticity, and a length. B beyond that, we're good. We don't really need any additional information, right? So that, that'll define everything that we need for this problem, or at least for this element. Other than one uh, component, which I'll talk about here in a little bit, and that's its assembly. Okay. Is everybody all right with this? Okay. So we've got our AE over L. That means we can write a stiffness matrix for, for, this, uh, for this element, right? Now, how big is the stiffness matrix for the element? Two by two. Okay. So what I might do is, I don't know, maybe somewhere... I don't know, over here, maybe I'll highlight a region, maybe box it up and say this, this region, I don't know, maybe give it some color, uh, make, it, maybe make it blue or something. Okay? That's where my stiffness matrix is going to go for, for this particular bar. Okay? Now, let me, let me just make sure everybody's been pay, uh, paying attention to whatnot. This cell and this cell, okay? everything in this matrix is AE over L, right? This cell and this cell, are they positive or negative? Positive, and these two are? All right, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say equals that, equals that, and then equals negative of that, and then equals negative of that. Is everybody all right with that? I just... Set it equal over there. See, here, here's my whole point, and I'll show you why I'm doing this. Watch this, okay? 
What happens if my area suddenly changes? Instead of being 6, it's 9.48. Now everything else has changed accordingly. Do you see why I'm doing this? So I'm trying to make my, my sheet as adaptable as possible. Okay? Everybody okay with this? All right. So far so good? Okay, now a couple things I'll, I'll bring up. Okay? Now, let's go back to the original problem. I'll, I'll give you all a minute. Is everybody okay with this? All right. There, are, there is another critical piece of information that defines uh, uh, properties associated with this element, and that's where it is in the system, right? Remember, element number one is connected to joint one and joint two, or node one and node two, right? Remember that? And remember when we were uh, going through this whole process of assembly, we said, what, we've got code numbers associated with that, like one and two, remember that? Remember us putting those code numbers off to the side? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that up a little bit. Let me see if I can format that, you know, a little bit differently. Because they're not, they're not values associated with the matrix. They're just, you know, important pieces of information associated with our problem. Let me make that 16. Make it so you all can read it. Is everybody okay with that? Maybe we'll just leave that like that. And we'll say that this matrix, maybe I'll, I'll put a little name beside it or something. I'm going to say that this is my little k matrix. K for element number one, however you want to do that, as long as you're keeping it neat. Everybody okay? All right, now, this is the individual uh, element stiffness matrix for this bar, right? Now, let's just be clear on something. How big is the stiffness matrix for the whole system gonna be? Four by four, right? So, what I'm gonna do is over here off to the side, I'm going to do a, a similar operation. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And box off an area, something about like this. Maybe make this area, I don't know, make it green. Something like that. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this name, I'm going to call it Big K1. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second. All right? And its codes are going to be something about like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Y'all see what I'm doing? I'll give y'all a, ch uh, a chance to sort of catch up and and format that how you'd like. Y'all can do whatever you want. Again, there's nothing wrong with putting a little bit of love into this and making it, you know, your own, doing it your own way. I'm just sort of roughing it out here in front of you all. But that, that's, that's totally fine. Again, it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. You arrange it however you want. Give you all a second to catch up. Okay. Everybody good? Okay, now, let's, let me go back to the slideshow a little bit because I want to walk through this whole assembly process with you all again. Let's go back. Okay, so if you recall, last time we had gotten to this point where we wrote stiffness matrices for each element, and they look something about like this. So right off the bat, we should be doing something right because we're getting the same stiffness matrix for element number one like we did before, right? Everybody okay? Now, Remember this process of assembly. We take these terms and we place them where they belong in the individual stiffness matrix, okay? Now, an easy way of doing that is to just think I need to match up those code numbers beside the matrix. So like element number one 
in the grand stiffness matrix, those terms went here, 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 and here, right? And you can think about it term by term. You can say, okay, let's take this term. This is associated with one and one. So it goes right here, one and one. This term right here is associated with two and one, two and one, and, and so on and so forth, right? So would it be a fair statement to say that for element number one, those terms in the grand stiffness matrix go right here and right here accordingly. Would that be a fair statement? Right? Because that's where they went, right? 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So far so good? Okay. Now, the nice thing about doing this in Excel is because of Excel's, you know, visual acclimation, I mean, you can literally see where those terms go in the individual matrix and its ability to copy and paste. Is That's kind of nice. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to go over here, see where you've got the rows and columns. See how it's got one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. See how you get that black arrow pointing to the right? Now I've copied that entire row. You know, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven rows, right? So watch what I'm doing. I'm going to control C, hit copy, or you can hit copy up there, then go here and paste. Now I've got the same thing all over again. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go into this series of cells and edit what's appropriate. So now let's start entering the information in for element two. Okay, what's the area of element two? You all have the notes right in front of you, right? Eight. Eight. Okay, what's the E? 3,000. And the length is still 120. Okay. All right. So now it's, it's already updated my AE over L, right? And now my stiffness matrix is correct, right? My, my element level stiffness matrix. Is this over here correct? You tell me. Is this one over here correct? No, because those terms are in the wrong place. So now let's update that. Maybe while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and update these names as well. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that. So maybe I'll call this K sub 2, or little k sub 2. Call this big K sub 2. Okay? Now, watch this. Okay? Before we start jumping into this, let me ask that question again. Is this in the right place? This one right here. Is that in the right? No, it's not. Really, it should be about right here, right? Why is that the case? Because the numbers are 2 and 3 and 2 and 3, right? So maybe what I'll do is also go ahead and edit these here as well, like these, these terms there, the, the, the codes for that element level matrix. So 2, 3, two, three. Is that a fair statement? And then, maybe I'll delete all this stuff over here because this is all wrong and say that those terms really need to go here. Is that a fair statement? I'll give you all a minute to catch up. Because this is important. I really want you all to, to, to be able to, to keep track of this. I'm going to take this first column, make it a little smaller, so that you all can actually see everything here on the screen. Again, I want us to do this together. Okay, looking pretty good. Looking good. Yeah, we've got a little bit to edit there. So far, so good. All right, I'll tell you what. You all are getting the idea, right? Why don't you all do element three on your own? Do element three. Let's see what you get.
Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do element 3, but I'm going to turn the display off. There we go. Make you all have to think a little bit. Shucks. Yeah, I know. Darn, right? Let's see how you all are doing. You're still working on it. Still working on it. You're looking good. Now, ultimately, you'll need to change those and those. Like, that's not that big of a deal now, but when we start to get into trusses, keeping track of that stuff's actually really important. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, you're working on it. Looks good. Let's see. Okay, you still got a little bit of work to do. Yes, sir. What's that? I, I don't understand the question. What, what are you trying to do? Just box it. Well, you can't. You can't <coughs> copy. The whole point is that you have to like set this equal over here. You see what I mean? And set that equal. What's that? Well, oh, oh. the the reason. Okay, that's just because of the way you formatted the cells. If you go in right here you can like actually apply borders to the cells and then right here like you see so you made them white if you make them like no fill then then I'll come in maybe I don't know, whatever color you want as you all are working on this one point I will make is is again I I am recording these and these will go on YouTube so if you miss a button or something no big deal I mean you can always go back and watch the video so Good. All right. Yes. Well, you, it, again, you're, you, the the point isn't to paste. The point is to sure. set those cells where they need to be. So I would just say equals that. You see what I mean? I'm just you know like equals that. That that's what I'm doing. You're almost there. You're almost there. You're doing pretty good. Yes, sir. Let's see. That looks good. Dead on. Looks good. All right. Um, I'm going to turn the display on while you all are working on this. I think I I think everybody sees where this is going. Get on. Yours yours is right. So. Okay. So now this pop back up. Here's what I've got. So you can see that sort of pattern with the uh, element stiffness matrices going into the big one. Now w one point I will make is this doesn't seem to be that big of a deal updating these numbers 
And, and I'd argue that for a problem like this, for this particular problem, maybe it's not the biggest deal in the world. However, when we start doing things like trusses, or when these bars start going all over the place, your bookkeeping really matters, okay? So making sure you're up to date with that and keeping track is a big deal. Because if you're dealing with something like trusses, it's very possible, see how, how in the stiffness matrix they were nice collected chunks in the stiffness matrix? That might not be the case with a truss. They might be all over the place. So make sure your bookkeeping is on, okay? That's, that's all I'll say on that. So is everybody good? Now, let, this is the big point I would make in terms of uh, uh, what comes next. Okay? These green matrices, these matrices here on the right, the purpose of these cells was to put the element stiffness values where they're supposed to go inside the big matrix. Okay? Now, what happened any time you had a value that overlapped? You add them. So watch this. I propose to you that if you want to do, let's say, a whole big stiffness matrix for the entire system, I'm going to put something like down here. And let me, let me delete everything out of this. I'm going to give it, uh, I'm just going to call it K. And I might color it a little differently because I want it to really emphasize that this is the whole system. So I've got a K for the first matrix, K for the second matrix, K for the third matrix. How am I going to assemble this? Watch this. I'm going to go to an individual cell and say, watch what I'll do. I'll say that equals the sum of that, that, and that. Does everybody see that? Separated by commas. Now watch what happens. Okay? I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to take this value and I'm going to copy and paste it everywhere in the matrix. And look what you get. Wasn't that our assembled stiffness matrix for the whole problem? That's it. I'm just using copy and paste. You know, you can do it in the top left corner you know, on your screen or you can do control C and control V, or whatever you're f comfortable with. Not too bad, right? This is pretty straightforward. <coughs> okay, now, what are we going to have to do to this matrix? We're going to have to reduce it based on our boundary conditions, right? We've got to strike out rows and columns. What rows and columns are we going to have to strike out for this problem? What, what numbers are we dealing with? Column one, or column in row one and column in row four. So watch what I'm going to do. In, in order to um, do this a, a, a little uh, you know, more effectively and make sure I'm keeping track of everything, I'm going to highlight one and four. And I don't know, instead of just deleting them, I'm going to, I don't know, make them really dark. And then highlight one, highlight four, and just, I don't know, like make them dark. And so the idea is, is that I assembled it, and then I then reduced it. So whatever's left over, that is what that's that's my reduced this uh, system stiffness matrix. So what I might do is I might just for the sake of completion say all right, let's put another cell down here, call it K R, and say well, how big is K R? You know wh what do I have to deal with? Maybe I'll move that down one. Well, it's a two by two. <laughs> Let me delete that and just set that equal to those cells there. Maybe put the appropriate, you know, just copy and paste those member codes. Accordingly. And say that's my reduced stiffness matrix. And that's one of the nice things about Excel is that you can do everything in that row style operation and keep track of what's going on. I'll see what I'm where I'm getting at. Yes, sir. Okay, so, okay, first up, keep in mind, anytime, let me hit escape. Oh. 
Anytime you do a formula, you have to start off with equals. Okay? And then, you know, bam, bam, bam. Then close it. See, that's why it didn't work. I mean, that, and then control C becomes control V for copy and paste, or you can just do that, whichever one you want. You have to do that, and then you just use commas, and then close it back up. See that? All right, and then just hit enter. There you go. Oh, uh, all I did was, all I did was this. Okay, so I just, like, I knew that from the problem, one and four were the ones, so I just selected one and said, Let's just make it a different color, like oh, okay. that. And then selected four, that, and then one and four, and did the same thing. Now, one thing I will mention, um, again, when we start dealing with trusses, the rows and columns that we strike out might be all over the place as well, because it's not as, as, as neat and collected as we, as we see here. And That'll make more sense when we get into trusses. But I would just stress to you, some of these steps that I'm taking right now, you know, making sure I rewrite the member codes and make sure I, you know, go from a K to a K reduce. I know this seems, well, you know, obvious, and some of you who are more experienced with Excel are probably wondering why I'm doing some of the same things twice. Again, the, the main reason is when these problems get massive and get a little more complicated, Having a systemic way of doing these problems is important. Okay? Everybody good? Yes? Okay. You, well, you've got your system matrix. You then need to go back to the problem and recognize what needs to be eliminated. So, what needs to be eliminated? And that's one and four because those were the ones that were fixed. All right. Everybody good? Well, I, I didn't really do anything. It was really just more about going to the sheet and saying, well, yeah, that, that was it. That was it. That was it. Right. Everybody good? And again, I, this is all being recorded, so if you, you know, miss something, no big deal. All right. Everybody good? Okay. Now, so going, uh, again, th that's one of the reasons why I gave you all this. So let's go back to this procedure page and see where we're at. Have I developed a local stiffness matrix for each element? Yes. Have I assembled them into a big K matrix for the whole system? Yes. Have I applied boundary conditions to obtain KR? Yes. There we go. Okay. So now what I might do is I might say, okay, here is a stiffness matrix for the whole system. Let's see if we can see what comes next, what would the force vector for the whole system look like? Let's see if we remember that. So how many, um, maybe I'll, I'll clean this up, maybe move this down a little bit. What, what are the dimensions of the force vector going to be? It's going to be one column, but how many rows total for the whole thing before we apply boundary conditions? Four, okay. So I'm going to have something that looks about like this. One, two, three, four. Um, maybe I'll move that down one to be consistent. That's going to be my values, right? And I like using different colors. We'll make this, I, I don't know, make it kind of purplish. Oh, that's good. So you tell me, at this point right now, what do I need to type into this thing? I mean, you've got what the problem looks like, right? Let's go back, let's go back to that. Here, remember, here's the problem, right? So, what's the force on joint one? Well, you could, right now, we could use the term zero. It's not really going to matter because we're going to apply boundary conditions. Really, there's a support reaction there. We don't know what it is, so I might call it something like R1, okay? It's not going to matter because we're not going to use it right now, okay? What I'm really more interested to make sure that you get correct are what are these values? So, what do I put in for the force at joint two? 300. What do I put in for joint three? What, what's that? 
not 125, negative 125. Why am I putting negative? Because it's going to the left. There we go. See? See? I got you. I got you. So, okay, so if I type this out, I've got R1, which I don't know what that is right now. I've got 300 minus 125, and then R4, right? That's my force, that's really my force vector for the whole problem, right? That's really what it looks like. But, you know, I guess I could say that from a, an analysis standpoint, it doesn't really matter because those are going to be eliminated, right? Fair statement? So this is the force vector for the whole system. This is the reduced force vector based on boundary conditions. Fair statement? Now, I want you all to get to this point because how I solve for those displacements, I want to make sure everybody pays attention to. Well, okay. What's that? How'd you get the number of values again? 300 over 25. Uh, okay, all right. So these values come from the applied loads on the structure. So at joint one, we just have a support reaction. This is positive 300 because it's going to the right, negative 125 because it's going to the left. Okay, you had a question. What's that? Why, why are you getting, I don't, I don't know that they're wrong, are they? I don't know that they're wrong at all. Let me see, hold on. I, you, I don't think you copied and pasted your cells correctly. All right, everybody good? Okay, all right. You all have your screens in front of you and you can, you know, organize this how you would like, okay? But what I really want to pay attention to are, are two things, this KR and this FR, right? Now, let's just keep this in mind from a matrix multiplication standpoint, okay? Force is defined as the stiffness times the displacement. Now, we've got the stiffness and we've got the force, but what we want is the displacement, right? So. In order to do that, we got to do a matrix inverse, right? So what's our, our ultimate solution going to be? Those displacements, we're going to multiply two matrices. We're going to multiply the inverse of this times that, okay? So this is where you all might want to pay attention, all right? So here I've got KR and I've got FR. I'm going to put myself a space here down below, and, and I'm, I'm doing it kind of close just so you all can see what I'm doing we'll call this dr, okay? And let me give it a little bit of a different color so that we know what I'm looking at. I don't know, we'll make it, uh, that, that's good enough. Okay, now, uh, before you all start uh, typing anything, you know, and get set up, I want you all to see what I'm doing here because this is kind of important, okay? So, all right. We are doing a matrix multiplication. So a couple things right off the bat should, should jump at you. Number one is I need to highlight the whole area before I start typing, right? I can't just click this cell and start, you know, typing in my formula or whatever, right? I can't do that. I have to highlight the whole thing and then start typing, all right? So watch what I do, okay? I'm going to say that these displacements equal the matrix multiplication of two things. Now, what am I doing? I'm taking the inverse of this times that, right? So watch what I do. So equals m mult of inverse of this 
comma, I'm taking the inverse of that matrix, times this term. Close it. Then what do I do? There it, control, shift, enter. And there's our displacements. I will let you all work on that. But those are the values that we got before, right? Well, that's how you get them. Yeah, I'm sure you all could do this by hand. It's just, it's just matrix math. It's not something you haven't done before. But at this point, I'm more concerned that you can utilize the software. Oh, uh, well, it's here. Here, what I'll do is this. I will, and then I have it up here in the formula bar. That way everything's colored and whatnot. Is that, is that good? Or Okay, that's fine. Sir. Oh, okay, okay. So, so what you need to do is just highlight both of them, click inside here, and then just Control Shift Enter, and then it'll fill both. But you gotta highlight. You have to have both cells highlighted before you start typing. If it was a a three by one, you need three cells highlighted or or whatever. Yes, sir. Okay, well, the, that, that's fine. Everything's correct in your formula, except you're not taking the inverse of that. So you have to, see, remember, we, we've got to take the inverse of our stiffness matrix. So what you've got to do is say inverse and then put a parentheses right there. So what we're doing is we're saying, I'm going to take the inverse of that system like, and then and then multiply it times that second vector. See, see what I mean? It's like we're it's like order of operations. How are we doing? Doing good. Okay. All right, you did the same thing. Okay, what well, I'll show you I'll show you a little trick. Okay. So you've only got the first value. You have to highlight both of them. And then see when you're doing matrix math in Excel, you have to do it all at once. So you can't like do this cell and then do that cell. So you highlight them all at once, and then if you do Control Shift Enter, it does them both. Anytime you're doing a big matrix operation, have all of the necessary cells highlighted before you start typing. That's just for matrix math, though. Let's see. Is everybody good so far? Okay. All right. You're okay. I'll, I'll be. You're. Uh, well, you're a little behind. You might just have to catch up on, on the video. Is that all right? Because you're you're like a little bit behind. But all I did was just set that equal to those terms there. Okay. All right. Does that sound good? All right. Question. Yes. I'm not in the group to do this with it. Whoa, whoa, okay. So, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. First thing is you're not highlighting the whole thing. Okay. Now, now start typing it. Yeah. Because that term. And again, when okay, did you have both of them highlighted? Uh, yeah. Did you do Control Shift Enter? Oh. That was the issue. You have again, you have to have them both highlighted before you start typing. Mm -hmm. Yes, but your I think yours is good, isn't it? Yeah, yours is good. Yeah. Okay, you're. This is wrong up here. That's why. Um, okay, and set that equal. See, it, did, it doesn't match. 
See what I mean? There it goes. Is everybody good? Okay. Now, again, I know this is a, it might seem like a long process, but this is nothing compared to what's coming. So, like our trust problem, we might spend a couple days on just because of the, the time that gets into it. And the beams, <laughs> this will be fun. But the point is, you know, going through this methodology to make sure everybody's good on this. First time, it takes a little while, but when you get into it the second time, it, it's not so bad. All right, everybody good? Okay, so let's go back to our procedure and see where we're at. So think about that. Okay, part one, we developed each individual stiffness matrix. We assembled them. We had a reduced stiffness matrix for the whole system. We developed a force vector, right? Developed a force vector, applied boundary conditions, got a reduced uh, force vector for the whole system. We then solved for the displacements, right? So far, so good. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, let's, let's read this step seven. Let's see if we understand what's going on here. I'm going to develop a displacement vector for each element. Now, what does that mean? Let's go back to our presentation. And if you recall, so we talked about applying boundary conditions, and we got to this point. And then I said, well, you know, you can two by two, two equations, two unknowns, do whatever you want, and you get to this point, right? So what this is saying, let, let's make sure we interpret this. So we got a D2 of 1.3 and a D3 of 0 0.45. Let's see if we remember. So these are displacements, right? We'll pop quiz. What are the units? 1.3 what? 0 0.45 what? What are the units? Inches. These are displacements. Now, in what direction are these displacements? To the right. There we go, because they're positive. And, and what this is saying is that this whole, those joint two and joint three that they displace in some amount to the right. Everybody good? Now, this is the displacement vector for the whole system, okay? What I want is a displacement vector for each individual element. So really, if I wanted to expand the displacement vector for the whole system, it would look something like this, right? Because D1 and D4 are zero. They don't move because that, that's what that fixed support means, is that they are a fixed. They don't move. So I can take those values and say, well, here's a D1, here's a D2, here's a D3, right? Is that a fair statement? Okay, watch this. So <laughs> I'm going to go to my Excel sheet, and I'm going to say, maybe drop down a little bit. Let me drag that down. You all, you all can format it however you want and say, well, see, I got a K1, K2, K3. Maybe I'll just do it something like this. Let's see. We'll call this D1. I'm, oh, I'm just going to empty those, give it another color. I don't know. I think I'm running out of colors, aren't I? I don't know, that, that's good. D1, D2, D3. All right, so that's D2, D3. Okay, so I got 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4. So, so watch what I got going on here. So the... Anywhere that I have a member code of 1, or a joint code of 1, the displacement is 0, right? Because that's the support. So that one's 0. Anywhere that I have a, uh, an element code of 2, or a joint code of 2, what's the displacement? 1.3. So that means this one is 1.3. That means this one is 1.3. Anywhere that I have a 3, it's... 0 0.45, there we go. And anywhere that I have a 4, it's 0. So far so good? That's simple, right? Now, I have a displacement vector for each element, right? I need a stiffness matrix for each element. But wait, don't I already have that? Scroll way up to the top. What are these? 
stiffness matrix for each element, right? So if I want, I can copy and paste and just say, let's just copy and paste this whole thing. E. And say, there we go. If I need to, I'll set those terms equal. Let's see. Equal all of that. And you all can format it however you'd like. The only reason that I'm dragging them down is so that everything's visible. Maybe take this, move it up a little bit. Take this, move it up a little bit. I'm trying to keep everything on the same screen so that when you all review this video later, it's all there. <coughs> all right. Does everybody see what I'm doing? All right. So I have stiffness matrices for each element. I have displacement vectors for each element, right? So how do I calculate the forces? Force equals stiffness times displacement. I simply, this times this, this times this, this times this. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this. Let me move that over there. Call this F1. Whoop. Maybe, I don't know. Let's see if I can you know, do that or something. I don't know. Maybe put one down here, put one down there. This is just me prettying it up a little bit, getting my format the way I want. Okay, so how do I determine the force in each element? Stiffness times displacement. So I'll give you all a little bit of time to format this how you want, and then we'll walk through this calculation. Y'all see what's going on, what I'm doing? So, let me show you what I'm going to do, okay? Hold on. Well, the values won't show up because what I'm going to do is say, you know, equals that. So that yeah, and then do say equals that. So that I'm referring back to that calculation I've already done. Yeah, equals Everybody good? Okay, so watch what I'm going to do. So the difference between this calculation is there's no inverse. I've already done my solution. So it's just equals MMULT of stiffness and displacement. Control, shift, enter. Now, remember the values that you should get here, right? Equal and opposite right? Now, the nice thing, if you've got all your Excel uh, calculations lined up, what you can do is copy and just paste the whole thing, and it'll automatically do your matrix math for you. Copy and paste, it'll do the whole thing for you. So you don't have to type it in three different times. And again, it's just stiffness times displacement. And for every matrix, what do I have? Equal and opposite. See that? like positive, negative, or negative, positive, or what have you. And remember, that's indicative of whether or not it's in tension or compression. Those values better be equal and opposite, because if it's in tension, you know, going to the left or going to the right, or vice versa for compression. And here, let me, I'll just pick the top one, and highlight that so you can see what's going on.
So let's see if we can remember this while, while you are doing this math. Let's think about the purpose of a problem like this. The purpose, because I know you're doing a lot of this math and it's a, after a while you're like, oh God, what's the point of all this? Let's make sure that we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay, so we've got the displacement, the, the displaced shape for the whole structure. We, we know D1 and D4 are zero. We know what D2 and D3 are. They're to the right, okay? We now know what the force inside each element is. Let's take F sub two. Let's see if we remember. Can you look at this vector and tell me whether or not it's in compression or in tension? Let me ask you this. Is this top value, is that going to the left or to the right? Going like that, right? The second value, is that going to the right or to the left? Right. So what you're telling me is that the top one's going like this, bottom one's going like that. There we go, right? See that? Now, what about this one up here, okay, F1, 130 going like that, 130 going like that. That's tension, right? So those make, does that make sense, the fact that those numbers are equal and opposite? So far so good? Okay. Now. We have one final calculation that we're going to do for the whole problem, okay? Everybody good? All right. What I want to do is I want to count or determine, I want to do this. Let's get a D matrix for the whole system. And I'm going to format it like this. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to get my cells formatted a certain way, and you'll see what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So I got a D matrix for the whole system, and let's get a K matrix. Um, for the whole system. Okay. I use Format Painter quite a lot because it, it's quick to get some cells formatted a certain way. And I'm also going to, let's get a force vector. Uh, we'll make that like that. That's good enough. Get you all set up something like this and I'll show you what I'm going to do. You can leave it blank because we're going to fill in the values here really quickly. Okay, let's start off with something simple. Let's start off with this D matrix. Would you agree that an acceptable D matrix for this problem will be something like this. The first value and the fourth value are zero, right? And D2 and D3 equal that. Would that be a fair statement? Okay. That is the displacement vector for the entire system, right? The entire system. What about the K matrix for the entire system? We already assembled that, didn't we, right? Couldn't I just say that this equals, like go to this, like let's say this first cell, and say equals, and go way back up here, and that, right? I know we graded out because we eliminated that for reduction, but in the end, the values are still there, right? We didn't delete them off the Excel sheet for a very specific reason. This is why, okay? So would you agree that if I drag that out, that's the stiffness matrix for the whole system, right? Would you agree with that? All 
Okay. Now, see what I did up here? I did a stiffness times displacement, stiffness times displacement, stiffness, and so on and so forth. I'm going to do that one more time for the entire system. So, equals matrix multiplication of the stiffness matrix for the whole thing and the displacement vector for the whole thing. Control, shift, enter. Y'all see what I did? I just, once I created my K matrix for the whole thing, my displacement vector for the whole thing, it's literally just matrix multiplication, the first times the second. Yes, sir. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, again, you got to highlight the whole thing. Now start. Now, control, shift, enter. There you go. All right. Is everybody good? Did everybody get these values? Okay, now I want to look at this resulting vector real quickly. Let's start off by looking at these values in the middle. And we'll color them differently. Those values in the middle, what are those? Those are the applied loads, right? Isn't that a gut check that what we got is the correct answer? Because this is the stiffness of the system. These are the resulting displacements of the system. If we compare those two, we better get the forces that were applied, right? So that's our check that what we did is correct. What are the one and four? What are those numbers? The other ones. The center ones are our applied loads. What are the values for one and four? The reactions. Those are the reactions. So at, jo at node one or joint one, we have a reaction of 130 kips to the left. And we have a reaction here of 45 kips to the left. Okay. So going back to the problem definition, remember, you can combine your free body diagrams and get the 130 kip to the left or the 45 kip to the left, or you can just go and recalculate everything. Everybody all right with this? So to summarize, this is our summary for the whole problem. Does everybody understand how we determined these values? Everybody okay with this? Now, does anybody have any questions? Okay, a couple things I want to show you. All right. So, I know we did this kind of messy. Um, let's see, uh, lecture notes, let's see, or analysis. So, okay, so this is kind of like me, like this would be my, my uh, solution, I guess, like cleaning it up a little bit. It's the, we're looking at the same thing, but this is me just trying to. I don't know, organize it and clean it up a little bit. I mean, you can see the element stiffness matrices for each element. We've got the assembly. It's the same process we did before. The application of the boundary conditions by reducing it, solving for the system, breaking it apart, uh, and so on and so forth. Everybody okay with this? This is just kind of an idea. I mean, you know, um, what I've been doing with you all in class, like I, let's put, if I was turning it in, I might clean it up a little bit, but all in all, grand scheme of things, this is what we did, okay? Everybody okay with this? All right, well, that's the um, one thing I wanted to show you. The second thing I wanted to show you was, uh, I know, I know, homework, oh, oh, oh goodness, I know. I got a homework assignment for you. This is a fairly short homework assignment. I don't think it'll be that bad. I am gonna walk through it with you so that you understand what's going on. Um, okay, so 
for, for the first little bit in this class, there will be very few assignments that you actually do by hand. Um, a lot of this will just be straight Excel work because um, that's really what I want you to understand is how the Excel uh, portion in this course works. So let me walk you through L or problem number one and two. There's only two problems on this assignment. So problem number one, I've given you um, a couple of matrices and I've just asked you to do some matrix calculations. Um, and the reason why I'm having you do these matrix calculations is because this is the type of stuff you will do in this class, okay? And if you, it, I mean, this is like square one, okay? And, and a lot of this we've already done. We did it in this example. Like, like take, um, you know, the inverse, multiplying two matrices. We've already done this stuff. We haven't done transposes yet, but we will, okay? So everybody good? <coughs> okay. So that's problem one. Now, this is where things get interesting. This is problem number two. Okay? So problem number two is essentially the same problem that we did before. The only issue is that the assembly and the system that we're looking at is a little different. Okay? Um, now, what I want you to do from a conceptual standpoint, see this? These, these rectangles right here, these vertical rectangles, one, two, three, four, and five, those are the joints, okay? So this whole system stiffness matrix for this system will be five by five. It won't be four by four, it'll be five by five. There are six individual elements, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Everybody see that? There are six elements. Instead of using AE over L, just use K. Just use these K values and just plug them in. So like, I'll go ahead and tell you, the first element stiffness matrix would be 4 minus 4 minus 4 and 4. Everybody see that? Okay. What's going to make this problem complicated, I'll go ahead and tell you, is the assembly. Because stuff is going to go all over the place. And I want you to get used to that. Okay. So here is your system. 1 and 5 are the joints that are fixed. You apply boundary conditions. This is what I want from this problem. I want the displacements here, here, and here. I want the forces in each of those springs, and I want the reactions at 1 and 5. Okay? Summarize that, as well as the operations on problem 1. Send me an Excel file. Do one week from today. Okay? How's that? Sound good? All right, that's due in a week. I thought we'd get to trusses today, but um, I'm actually going to end it early. Like I, I taught this class last semester, and I'm actually really happy with how our pace is going. We actually were a little bit ahead of the curve last semester, so taking it a little slower, it, I'm, I'm fine with that because we got a, a, a lot of material to cover this semester. Because um, after we get through matrix math, we're going to sort of and matrix analysis, we're going to redo this stuff from a finite element approach, and then extend that to more complex problems. Yes, sir. I'll say, that. okay, that's a good question. It'll depend on the assignment. We will have some assignments where we use the finite element method to derive some elements. Like, here's a for instance. Um, this, all of this stuff that we're doing, we're using what are called two noded bars. There's a bar element, there's a node, and a node, okay? This won't make a whole lot of sense now, but later on when we start getting into things like interpolation and shape functions, there is a potential to have a three-noted bar. And then you have to start quantifying the energy inside the, the element in order to derive its stiffness matrix. I might make you all go through that process, and, that, and that's math. That's a lot of derivation and calculus. It's not complicated, but that is not an Excel-friendly assignment. That is do it by hand. So, But that's not going to happen for a little while. For these first couple assignments and whatnot, this is all going to be Excel. So literally just, you know, this is how I want this assignment to go, okay? So, like, you'll open up a new Excel file, okay? So watch this. Oop. Open. Okay. You'll open up an Excel file. See, like, down here where it says Sheet 1? You'll Sheet 1, you'll have Problem 1, Problem 2. You know, just do and just send me the one file, and, and then I'll, I'll grade it on, on MU Online. I'll try and keep your grades posted on MU Online. I'll also take a PDF of this and post it on MU Online. That way you all have it. And that'll pretty much be all she wrote for this. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Next time I'm going to take this problem, this fundamental analysis, and I'm going to make it more complicated because we're going to look at trusses. And, and 
and just to give you a preview of what's to come, the issue with trusses is that the members are oriented in different uh, uh, at different angles. So, you know, that's a bar element, and a bar element is a bar element. Like the mechanics of a bar element do not change. Like uh, bar elements don't change whether or not they're facing this way or facing that way. What gets complicated, and I'll and I'll just sort of preview it, is this. Okay, the fact that a tr the difference between a bar and a truss element is that truss elements are oriented at different angles. So what you have to do is take into account the fact that there are two different coordinate systems. There's a coordinate system that would be defined for each element and a coordinate system for the whole problem. That's the difference between a local coordinate system and a global coordinate system. And we use what are called rotation matrices to transfer between the two. So that analysis procedure that I gave you all today, the difference between that and what you would use for a truss analysis, the only difference is sines and cosines. It'll look more complicated and it'll look like there's more steps, and there are, but it's all focused around sines and cosines, and that's it. All right, is everybody good? Okay, we'll get into this stuff on Thursday. I'll take my time, I wanna make sure we understand that, and then we'll get into it. Everybody good? All right, that's all I got. I will see you all on Thursday.